today's message, it would be called infinitely more. Let us pray. Father God, I, I thank you for your, your spirit that uh, is here. Um, Father, I, I thank you for each person that you have brought here. Um, Father God, we're going to lay some burdens at your feet today, dear Lord, and we are going to trust that you do what only you can do. For Father, you are infinitely more. Father God, you're, you're greater than anything that we can ask of. You're greater than anything we can think of. You're infinitely more. And so, Father, we need you to show up mightily today in a way that only you can show up. For, Father, these people could have been anywhere else in the world. They could have chosen any other church. They could have chosen any other location. But, Father God, we, we are trusting in you today to be big today. Big, Father. We're going to give you praise and glory and honor. Hide me behind the cross of Calvary, not my thoughts, not my actions, not anything of me, dear Lord. But let everything said and done here glorify your name. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Got a question for you today, believe it or not. Um, how many people consider themselves creative? Let me see your hands. Okay, let me define creative for you and see if you still think you are creative. Um, okay, these, these people, they, they think outside the box. Let me see your hands back up. You, okay. um, you can look at a, a situation and you can see lots of different solutions. To, to that situation. You can look at it lots of different angles. You're, you're not like one of me, like this, where you're just like straight, like that type of thing. Um, problems, like, you know, you, you'll, you'll fix it somehow. Like, it, it's, you're, you're creative. And uh, maybe you can build things. Let's see if we have any builders in the house. Can you raise your hand? You all know we're trying to build a church, right? Um, the, uh, maybe you can, uh, maybe you all can fix things. Let me see your hand. If it's broke, you're going to fix it. You're not paying somebody to come do that for you. Um, <laughs> You know, I have lots of broken things in my house, right? Um, you can develop things. Like, you know, your mind works that way. And I, I'm not, you could, you're not like me where you read the directions. Like, you, you just look at the box, the picture. Maybe you don't even do that. You just lay all those tools out there and, you know, Allen wrenches and all of those other things. That's the only tool I really know. That's why I call it say Allen wrench. Um, all those different little things in there. And you, all, you just put it together because that's just what you do. And, and you're, not, you're not one of these people like me who, like, you duplicate or replicate something. Like, it's a you idea. So, like, you look and you, you just can imagine it in your head. And then you make it happen. Let me see your hands now. Not quite as many. Um, got one person stand up in the back. You know we're trying to build a church, right? Um, and so... So I have a kid, in case you didn't know, and she's two. And that was a joke. I hope you all know I have a kid. Um, she, uh, she uh, as she's growing, um, her imagination is growing. And you got to be careful with that, um, just so you know, because she can imagine some crazy things. Um, and I, I really, I enjoy, I enjoy watching her, watching her play, because, you know, in adults, we say, like, creative and outside the box. In kids, we say, imagination. And I, she still prefers playing with a person, unlike her dad, I'm a learner, but she, she still likes, she likes people, and she likes having a friend, um, but she's really, she's really learning um, to kind of play on her, on her own. And so I'll, I'll sit on the couch, and I'll watch her, and she'll be talking up a storm um, to herself. And, uh, you know, she's going through all the things, and she's like, Daddy, Daddy, did you see that? No, but yes, I did, girl. I saw it. And um, we, we, we don't even have to leave our living room. And we can, we can run from crocodiles. She's not real good at saying that word yet, so it's, it's not, it's not real good. Um, so we, we, we run from T-Rexes. We, we get the couch cushions, and we can build a house. And we can build tunnels, and we can build bridges, and we don't want to step off the bridge because it will fall in the lava. Um, we, she can go over to the kitchen and she can make her daddy coffee. Um, I'm training her well. Um, she, she can cook dinner over there. Enjoy that while it lasts. Um, and like, so she, we do all these things and she's my kid because we don't like, I, I love not live, leaving the living room. Like it's awesome. And so we do all these, all these fun things um, in the living room and there, it, there's just like endless possibility with her. Endless. Endless. And she has a really good time. We don't need to pay all these expensive toys and all that craziness. Or we just have fun in the living room, building houses out of couch cushions. And it's a mansion to her. And the tunnel, 
you know, does it hurt my back? It does, but I, I, I still, I do my best um, to crawl, to crawl in it. And we, we ride horses sometimes, and we, we do, we do all this because in her mind, like there, that, that living room is limitless to her. But there, there's no, there, it, it, it's, a, it's crazy. What's really crazy is the thing that she gets me to do. Um, I, I, I have sang, and I'm not good at that. Um, I have danced. I'm worse at that. Um, I've, I've wore little princess outfits. Um, yeah. I think I look good in it, not gonna lie. Um, you know, I put on little high heel, he, I know it's getting weird here, but you know, I, uh, whatever she has me do, I, you know, yeah, I'll do it for you. You know, I just want her to like me. And, um, but it's, it, it's like her, the, everything right now in her age, like, Every, everything is possible to her. Everything. You want to fly to the moon? Sure, Daddy. Let's fly to the moon. It's possible. And somebody asked, what did y'all do? She'd be, we flew to the moon. Um, and as I watch her, and as I watch her think on these things and do these things, it, it, it takes me to the, the verse there in Matthew chapter 18. Um, and, and it says, you know, unless you become like a little kid, you're, you're not, you're not going to get into heaven. And that, that's, that's kind of scary at, at times because, you know, children, they don't put limits on things. They, they don't, they don't know what the word impossible or no means. They, 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 ju they just believe. They just believe it. And right now at her age, I pretty much could tell her anything. And she's going to believe what I tell her. And as I, and as I, as I watch, then, you know, because I, I am an adult, believe it or not, um, eventually that, that mindset of hers is going to be challenged and changed, unfortunately. And the world is going to start playing a role um, in her mind, and the world is going to begin to put limitations Sorry. on what she believes. And the, the world is going to try to teach her what she can't do. Uh, the world is going to try to teach her what she can't say. Uh, the world is going to try to teach her, like, why her God is not who her daddy has said he is. Um, the, the, world, the world is going to really try to transform her mind from this limitless thinking, believing in the impossible, to... This mind that is of the world, and the problem is there are two different minds. There's a mind of a child of God, and there's a mind of a child of the world, and they're not the same. They don't think the same. In, in fact, in, in Romans, Paul, Paul said that you don't be conformed to this world, and if you don't want to be conformed to this world, you've got to transform yourself by renewing your mind. And I'm wondering if the only way that we can renew our mind is if we go back and we start thinking the way that a child thinks. Because if you think about that, Jesus said we got to be a child if we want to get to heaven. Like, when, when, when did we lose at the, the ability to believe in the impossible? Like, when, when did that, like, when, because, listen, whether, whether you want to admit it or not, the, the reality of it is, there are things that we could say today, and you're going to say, that's impossible. Um, and whether you believe it or not, you, you do fight. You, you fight this, this thought process of what seems real because you can see it, and what seems real because you can think it, and what seems real because you've dealt with certain things. And the, uh, when, when, when did we lose the ability to believe that all things are possible. Because I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you, maybe you still believe it, and maybe you don't. Maybe, maybe you, maybe you're not like me. But um, I, I, I've noticed that you know, the longer you fight the devil, that he does come in, and you, do, you, you struggle with what you can believe and what you can't believe. And I'm not just talking about believing in God. When you start believing what God can do and what he won't do or what he can't do, and he robs the time that we spent with God in the living room where all things were possible. There, uh, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you. Um, 
there are there's been times in my life where I have encouraged those who were dealing with something significant to just let me put my hand on you and pray for you because my faith, I would move the mountain for you. I do it. And some of you are probably thinking, well, that's pretty conceited. No, huh? No, I, I just, I had, I knew if I could just put my hand on that person and pray for them, that that which they were dealing with would go away. Amen. And I believed it, and it, it happened over and over, and then, and then the, the devil is so smart because he, he then begins to chip away at that belief because, you know, then when something you try to remove that it can't, then he starts putting these doubts in your head like, well, you know, God, maybe he's not going to do it anymore. And then, and then the, the power that you think or you thought that you had, it, it, it start, you start getting to the point where it's like at times in my life, because I'm very honest with you, I've cringed when people have asked me to pray for them because at that very given state, I don't really feel like I can move any mountains for anybody. And oftentimes, when you don't think like you can move mountains for anybody, that's when people are always knocking at your door to pray for them. Um, and so then I, I, I take a step back and I, I like, when, when did God become limited in our life? Like, when, when did it happen? Like, when, when, when did we start thinking that yeah, God, he's just not, he's just not going to. He's, he's, he has said no. He's, he's, not going to, he's not going to answer. Like when, when did the enemy rob our childlike faith? When, when did the enemy rob the concept of miracles? When did the enemy rob the verse that with God all things are possible? When, when, did, when, did, it, when did it happen? Because you wonder why God's power seems limited in the world that we are currently living in. Well, his power obviously has not been limited, but those who the power is living in, who are supposed to speak the power, we have become limited at some point. You know, I, I think about the verse in the Bible where Jesus went into a town and he went to perform miracles, but when he got there, it said because of their unbelief, there were many things that he wanted to do, but he didn't. He couldn't do it. When, like right now, I would probably say that there would be a lot of us that, you know, we, we, would, we would probably struggle to believe that the fire that you're currently walking in, you're struggling to believe that the fourth man that appears to be the Son of God is going to show up because you've been in that fire for a really long time and he just hasn't come yet. There are probably some of you who are, are dealing with um, sight and you can't see anything and you are struggling to believe that God's ever going to reveal vision to you. There are probably some of you who, who feel like you can't walk and you can't live and you, you do not believe that God is ever going to call Lazarus out of the grave. Like he, there, there are some of us who are doubting what is possible with God. And so today, very quickly, I, I, I want to remind you of this. If you hear nothing else, your God that you serve is infinitely more. He, he's infinitely more than whatever you are facing. He's greater than the duress that you are dealing with. He, he is stronger than the oppression that is coming against you. He is greater than the depression and the anxiety that is setting in. He is greater than the illness that is destroying your life. God is infinitely more, and he needed me to tell Grace Renewed today that we need to get back to believing that he will perform the impossible. He, he, he will do things according to his plan if his people call upon his name and believe in him and trust that he is a good God. Yes. 
Uh, I need to remind you today that his power has not dwindled. He's not out of time. He, he, he's not reliant on anyone or anything to accomplish the task. He's alive and he's a well. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's the same God of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the same God that split the Red Sea. He's the same God that thousands of angels bow before him. He's the same God that demons tremble to. He's the same God that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. To. He is a God of infinitely more than anything we can imagine and ask. Amen. And today he's, he's going to ask some of you and he's going to challenge us to pray some big prayers. I want to go to the Bible uh, in Ephesians chapter 3 and we find Paul here. And he's sitting in a jail cell, believe it or not, writing to the people of Ephesus. And he's writing to a group of Jews and Gentiles, a mixture here, because remember the Jews were the chosen ones, the Gentiles were not. And Paul begins to write about how the sacrifice that God did for us on the cross of Calvary by sending his son, that not only now are there the chosen, but now the unchosen can be the chosen. They can be an adopted family. And he's preaching to this mixture of people about the theology of Christ and what they believe and how the blood of Jesus was enough and how now everyone has the chance to be adopted in. And it doesn't matter who you are or the color of your skin or how you talk or how tall you are or your gender. It doesn't matter any of that type of stuff, male or female, bonded or certain. He said all of that is gone in the eyes of Christ at this point everybody has the ability to go boldly before the throne of Christ and he's preaching to the church of Ephesus believe it or not about stopping the division and he's going through this letter and he's telling them all about what it is to believe and what they should believe and then in chapter 3 he tells them that he is the chosen person to speak this message to the Gentiles. And I believe, given how chapter 3 unfolds, once he writes that in his letter, he then is reminded of who he was. Because anytime you proclaim that you are going to do something, like, you know, I still, it, it's still hard for me to let it roll off my tongue that, I'm the pastor of a church. Like it, it's, it's hard. Because anytime you, you give yourself this title, then you're reminded of all the failures and things that eliminate or you know, disqualify you from being what you believe God has called you to be. And so Paul then is, is telling them that he's been chosen by God to preach this message to the Gentiles. And then I believe he begins to struggle with because he wasn't always Paul. There was a time in his life that he was named Saul and he destroyed Christians. And the Bible says he went to their houses and he pulled them out. He, he, he murdered them for their belief. And so now he's telling these people that they should believe this doctrine that he's preaching about how great God's love is for them. And he's got to be reminded of his past life. Right. And there's no better way that the enemy will try to silence you than to remind you of all the things that you once were or you still are. Or the things you're struggling with because let you then try to explain your testimony to someone. He'll very quickly shut you down right. by all your failures and all your faults and all your mistakes. And so Paul, is, he's, he's telling them, and he's trying to explain to them that he is changed, and he's this, this person, and he, he then tells them that God did much more in my life than I could ever have imagined. Like, he's used me in ways, like, Paul couldn't see the picture. Paul didn't know what his future held. Paul didn't know that God was going to come and, and knock him off his donkey and blind him and change his name. Paul didn't see any of that. He didn't know it. And even in his wildest imagination, Paul couldn't have ever it, it thought that. And there are things probably right now that in your imagination, you can't imagine what God can do with your current life. And so Paul goes, you know, he tells them who he is and then he's about his transformation of being Saul to Paul and he tells he's preaching the gospel. And then there's this transition in the letter and he tells them what they should believe and then he tells them they need to apply it. It's one thing to believe it. It's something else to live it. It's, it's, it's really something else to live it. And we can tell everybody all the time about what we believe and what they should believe. 
But if they don't see us live it, they don't care what we're telling them. They, they don't. And so Paul begins to transition this letter from believing it to living it. And in the middle, he's struggling with who he was. Because you can imagine what these people are going to say. Well, Paul, we, we knew what you did. Yeah, you're going to tell us about living it. And then, and then, then, then something happens. Paul, in his letter, breaks out in his prayer. So he's telling them what to believe. He wants to transition and tell them that they need to live it. But before they can live it, he's got to pray for them. And he tells them how good God is, and he, and he tells them all the things about his greatness. And then he says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, he said, now all glory to God, he said. Because you can give glory to a lot of different things in life. You can give glory to, to your neighbor. You can give glory to your employer. Nobody gives glory to their employer. You can give glory to all these different things. But he said everything in your life should glorify God. He said because God is the one who's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be worshipped. He deserves all your glory and honor and trust and obedience. He deserves it. He's glory. Everything we do should glorify God. He said we should sing from the mountaintops, from the rooftops, every talent that we've been given, every skill, everything that we do should all filter back to glorifying the Father, he said. He said, now glory to God. It's not because he, he just said who, like, who he was. Remember, he's telling that he's the one. That, it's not about Paul, though. He said it should be glorified the Father. Despite that I'm sitting in prison, there is still reason to praise, he said. And that's hard. That's hard when you're sitting in whatever life's prison has given you to then say all oh, glory to God. Yeah. He said all oh, glory to God. He said we're going to praise. And then he said this. He said all oh, glory to God who is able. Yeah. Hey, listen, God, God's still able to save. God's still able to free the addict. God's still able to change all these sexual things that are going on in our world. God, God's still able to save any relationship. God is still able to find the lost. God is still able to go after the one and leave the 90 and not. God is still able to save the sinner. God is still able to rebuke every demon. God is still able to do anything. God is able. Whatever you are currently dealing with, God is able, Paul said. And I know in life what you are currently dealing with, it seems that God isn't or he won't or he's not able. But Paul said, just be reminded, you need to be convinced that it's not over. God's not out of time. He is able at the drop of a hat to do whatever he needs to do to change your situation. God is able, he said. He's able. He's able. Present tense, he's, a he's able. He was able in biblical times. He's able. He's able. He said, "Now glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us." Do you know the work has never been about external? It's always been about internal. And that too often we're like the servant of Elijah and we're running up to the mountaintop to look for the hand of God and we want external things to show up. But God's work has always been about internal. That none should die, but all should come to repentance. Like you realize it's always been about the internal souls of individuals. That's always been his work. And do you realize that the power of God is within you at work? Because too often we look at our surroundings and to other people and we want to see God's power show up. When God says look in the mirror because the power is within you as an individual. We want to see it in our preacher. We want to see it in our leaders out there. We want to see, we want to see it in our people that are Christians forever. And God says, look in the mirror. The power is working within you. And the enemy and the devil has told you that you are powerless. But God needs you to be reminded today that you are powerful because of who he is. He said he is able and he's working within you. Can I tell you there's still wonder working power of the blood? You don't have to look far that the power that rose Jesus from the dead is still within you. And then Paul says, through the mighty power to work within us to accomplish infinitely 
more. Infinitely more than anything you can even think of, Paul said. I want you to think of the greatest miracle right now that you would ask God to perform in your life. I want you to get in your mind. The greatest miracle. If you could say, God, I want this miracle and it's the greatest one I could ever think of. Paul said, whatever you can think of, God is able to do infinitely more than that. Because his thoughts are not your thoughts and his ways are not your ways, but they're so much greater than ours. Paul said the people of Ephesus, you need to believe in the impossible and get back to believing that your God is able to do anything and more than anything you've asked him to do. But we have experienced discouragement, and we have experienced defeat, and we have experienced life. And the enemy just plays on that and uses that and uses that because God hasn't done what we've asked him to do for whatever reason. And then we stop. We stop living in that realm of the impossible. And we stop believing that miracles do happen. Because it's one thing, as Paul said, to believe in a miracle. But it's another thing to live expecting it. And so today, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I, I told you that we were going to search for mustard seeds. God has laid it on my heart that today, if you need God to do infinitely more that you can come forward and those who have just a few mustard seeds of faith we're going to lay hands on situations and we are going to pray as a body of believers in Christ for a miracle in people's lives And we're going to believe that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is still the God that we serve today. We are going to pray infinitely more on individual lives today. And as the Bible says, we will anoint them with oil. We will pray and God will will answer. And so right now, I'm, I'm asking you with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you are an individual who needs infinitely more from God today. to ask that those who just have a few mustard seeds, maybe just one, God, I pray that you will infiltrate his body, dear Lord, 
and every cancer cell in Jesus' name be removed. Father God, as far as the east is from the west, Father God, take every cancerous particle in his body and remove it in Jesus' name. We are praying, dear God, for a miracle. We are believing in the impossible. We are standing in the gap. We are rebuking every doctor report that we have received at this time. Father God, we're praying for a new trip to Lord. Father God, we're praying, dear God, for healing. We are praying for life. Father, without you, this is, this is impossible. But Father God, with you, we are claiming that you are more than you're infinitely more. Father God, every ounce of pain in Jesus' name, I ask that you remove it. Father God, the tumor that's present, I ask that you dissolve it. Father God, those things that don't belong, Father, cast them out. Father God, we are praying that your hedge of healing, dear God, go within him, go around him, go among him. Father God, astound the doctors of what you can do. Father God, I pray not only for him, but his entire family, dear God. Father God, give them peace and comfort, dear Lord. Father, right now I think of Jen where she's at. Father God, encourage her, dear Lord. Father God, we refuse to let go. We refuse, Father. Father in Jesus. For the Bible says where two or three are touching and agreeing, Father asking in the name, you will do it. Father God, we are claiming the scriptures, Father. In Jesus' name, rebuke the enemy's hold on his life, Father. Right now. now we, we, we know what to believe Father God let us live it now let us live that this has been defeated Father God no more pain no more tears no more sorrow Father God I pray life abundantly on him dear Lord we're believing dear God we're believing in you at grace renew we're believing in you for infinitely more, God. Father God, find a mustard seed today. Find a mustard seed from somebody today. Find a mustard seed, dear Lord. Find a mustard seed, dear God. Find a mustard seed. We praise you. We love you. Father God, we are relying and trusting on you. Jesus' name. Oh, Amen. First and foremost, it's so good to see him today. For Father God, the enemy has tried to rob the talent, the joy, and the blessing that you've given him. And Father God, he refused, he refused to stay home today. He refused, dear God. Father God, I don't, though, though health-wise, he probably could. Father God, he refused, dear God, to stay home. And Father God, I, I know, dear God, what the report says, but Father God... I know what God is. I know who you are and what you say. And Father God, as I keep hearing over and over, it is by your stripes that we are healed, Father. It's by those stripes on the cross of Calvary that we have the ability to come boldly before the throne, trusting and believing that the illness that Michael is fighting has absolutely, dear God, no right away in his body. 
For Father, you knitted him together before he was even known in his mother's womb. Father, you know how everything in his body should work. Father, right now, I pray for that liver, dear God. I pray for regeneration. I pray for growth. I pray for life. Father God, everything that should not be in his body, in Jesus' name, we rebuke it. I'm asking that when Michael goes to the doctor, dear Lord, that they are amazed by what happened, that there are no answers, dear God, other than God stepped in. Father God, find some mustard seeds today. For Father God, I believe that the enemy has attacked the individuals of the church that are held so many times. Father God, we will not stand for it. We will stand against it. In Jesus' name, we rebuke what the enemy is trying to do in Michael's life. Father God, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, let your healing virtue go through him. For you are the great physician. Father God, new life, new strength, new hope. Father God, no more pain. No more pain. Father God, I am asking, dear Lord, by the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on that cross of Calvary, Father God, we are asking for what people say is impossible. We're asking for it. But with man, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Find some mustard seeds, dear God. Find some mustard seeds. Find some mustard seeds. And Father God, in Jesus' name, we say unto this mountain, be thee cast into the sea. Father God, remove it in Jesus' precious name. Remove it. The ultimate healing, dear God. The ultimate healing. Complete full healing in Jesus' precious name. Complete victory, dear God, in Jesus' precious name. Thank you. Thank you. Complete victory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. Yes. Amen. Amen.